Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's roundtable. My name is Donald Santa, and I'm the President and CEO of the Interstate Natural Gas Association of America. INGA represents the interstate natural gas pipeline industry. Our members account for virtually all of the nation's major interstate natural gas pipelines. These companies operate the bulk of the approximately 220,000 miles of interstate natural gas transmission pipelines in the United States. INGA's principal message to the committee today is this. Pipeline development must go hand in hand with natural gas supply development if we are to realize the enormous potential that natural gas holds for the United States. Fortunately, our industry has kept pace with dramatic shifts that we've seen in the location and magnitude of domestic natural gas supply. Interstate pipeline companies built and placed in service over 12,000 miles of new pipe approved by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission over the last decade. Sufficient pipeline infrastructure is critical for the efficient delivery of natural gas and, the well and, and for a well-functioning natural gas commodity market. Absent this infrastructure and the ability to add it in a timely manner, our economy would be unable to realize fully the benefits of abundant natural gas. My written statement details examples that illustrate the difference that pipeline infrastructure can make in the prices paid by consumers. The interstate natural gas pipeline industry is fortunate to have a supportive and balanced legal and regulatory framework that makes it possible to respond to market demand with timely additions to the pipeline network. The key is the exclusive jurisdiction that the Congress has conferred upon the FERC both to authorize new interstate pipelines and storage facilities and to set the rates, terms, and conditions of the services rendered by interstate natural gas pipelines. Clearly, exclusive federal siting authority under the Natural Gas Act contributes greatly to the industry's success. But it is only part of the answer. The other key contributor is FERC's framework for setting pipeline rates, which pipelines and investors view as fair, predictable, and competitive. This enables pipeline companies to attract the investment needed to support this capital-intensive industry. While the process for authorizing new interstate natural gas pipelines works well, Inga suggests a couple of incremental improvements that would streamline the process for receiving the many permits that must be obtained before a pipeline may be built. My written, testament, my written statement describes two bills, one introduced by Representative Mike Pompeo, the other by Representative Tom Marino, that could improve the permitting process. These bills have our endorsement. Thank you again for the opportunity to participate in today's roundtable, and I look forward to our discussion.